Hi everyone, it's Andy from Hobby Headquarters and today we're going to start building the 135th scale from Academy, the Panzer 35T. It's a early German World War II tank. Uh, we'll do it up in the German gray of course and might even do a little winter camouflage on it. So let's get started on it. I'm going to give you guys a little history on the 35T. Uh, the Panzer 35T was a Czechoslovakian made light tank that was mainly used by the German forces during the beginning of World War II. During the invasion of Czechoslovakia, the Germans had seized 244 of these light tanks. The tanks had, were equipped with a 37mm KWK cannon plus two 7.9mm machine guns. The Germans would often use these with a crew of four, and many were converted into the radio vehicles that you'll see in this build. And the radio vehicles are signified by the clothesline antenna that you see on the back. As you start to build the uh, lower chassis of the vehicle, you'll notice that it is a multi-piece chassis. Uh, the parts fit together very, very well. There is a large uh, plastic stiffener in the middle that uh, really makes everything nice and square and really solid as you put it together. All of the front and back plates, because of the way they were originally built with all the rivets, are very nicely detailed, lots of rivet detail on the front and back, and go together really well. They're, all the plates are angled, so they actually just all slide right together and fit really tightly. The suspension system on this is very intricate and precise. Uh, lots of little pieces, but nothing that is very difficult to put together if you follow the instructions properly. Now, there are also a decent amount of road wheels on this kit as well uh, because of the type of tank and the way it was built. But there again, no problem putting those together on. They just go right into place, and you build up four of these little bogey suspensions, and they just clip right into place. Not a problem at all.
Okay, these are a couple of little building tips that I ran into as you start to build. Now, earlier in the video, you saw that I glued these um, little they're little plates that fit on the outside of the drive sprockets. Uh, act, look like they add a little protection. Do not go ahead and um, glue those on right away. I noticed that when you glue them on, that they kind of interfere with the, the tracks that we're going to put into place here. Now, I ended up popping these off, and I actually had to put a little tiny bit of filler behind it, and I actually just used this piece of uh, plastic on the other piece of the track links right here. Just cut that out, made it into a circle, and put it behind it. And as you can see right here, that way it lines up perfectly for the track. The track stays tr straight, but this if you leave that in in its regular position, the track has a tendency to want to flare up on the outside, and you can't get the track to wrap around properly. At least I couldn't on this particular build. So it's just a minor little thing. Put a tiny bit of filler behind this, and you won't have any problem at all. Now, the tracks that are included are very nicely detailed. They're link and length tracks. What that means is you're going to get long pieces of track for the top and bottom. The top here already has the pre-done sag inside of it. And then you have all the little individual tracks that you'll use. As you can see right here, I've started to use the wrap right around the, uh, the drive sprocket and the return rollers on it as well. So not very difficult at all. A little bit uh, more than obviously the rubber bands. But if you know about that little trick right here, you won't have any problem at all. I also went ahead and added just the touch of filler. On, on these pieces right here. I have to actually do a little bit of sanding. I just I couldn't get my uh, thing to line up perfectly, so I wanted to put that in there. So we'll do a little wet sanding on it. You can see the line is very, very minimal. But other than that, everything else is going together really, really well. After we put the rest of the tracks on, we will go ahead and install the fenders, which I've already done on this side. This side has the tracks and the fenders already installed. And I have to do a little more sanding on this one right here. This has got a little bit of excess overflow. And then the, the top will just literally click right into place and we can start working on the upper hull. Sometimes people get a little scared about individual tracks and I just wanted to assure you that these tracks are nothing to be concerned about. Uh, you will have a little bit of flash to clean up on the middle and on the backs of it. But the easiest way to put these together is build them in little sub-assemblies. Push two little tracks together and then just give it the tiniest little touch of glue and let that start to set up and it didn't even flow through the bottom. So I've got one of those already set up, the two-piece, and this is one of the length tracks which is actually four tracks already glued together. So once we have that, we can go ahead and install this other piece that we had and it will easily just pop it into place on the uh, tank itself and just kind of rest it into position there and just apply a little bit of glue to it and you'll see it have a tendency to just to immediately straighten right out after you've done that so we'll let that dry a little bit more but then you can see how we just go whoops the next little length will go right onto it right here and you'll just be able to completely wrap these tracks all the way around till you get to the bottom and then when the it comes to the bottom you'll have just a long piece that will just glue right into place. going to go ahead and attach the top plate top of the chassis and as you can see right here we'll glue that down in a second this piece right here is going to fit in nice and uh, tight and firm what I would do first is get this glued in right here uh, loosely so before you go pushing down on this you don't get the wrong angle on this get this nice and tight and then we can go from there
here's another quick little building tip before you go cut the entire aerial out of the uh, sprue you might want to leave the outer portions attached so when you're getting on the inside you can get a nice surface to sand on and it won't flex the piece at all because it's still got all these attachment points so you're less likely to break it now you will have to do that on the outsides but at least it saves you a little bit of time by sanding all the insides of the frame while it's still attached to the sprue Okay, I've gone ahead and put on most of the accessories throughout the entire tank. The rest of the little parts up in here, the antennas, things like that, the horn. Uh, what I went ahead and did is I went and sprayed the entire thing with NATO black. Now the reason I did this is not only for its shadow coat and to cut, start painting the wheels and the tracks, but is so we can go around and just make sure that we like any of the seams, to make sure that there was no gaps or anything that we need to fill later on. So. Uh, looking okay now I didn't put the uh, the tools on or the antenna we're still working on that and actually because of the way we're gonna weather this piece those kind of little things are gonna be very easily to, to break off so that'll be one of the last things we do is put those pieces on so now I'm gonna go ahead and put a uh, a light shadow or excuse me bright coat of the white around some of the highlight points to kinda make the gray look a little two-tone as we put it on Okay, I've gone ahead and clear coated the entire model as well as started working on the rust effect on the uh, tailpipe here. Now we're just going to go ahead and install all the decals and this is an early war one so you're going to get lots of the big white crosses all over it. So we'll go ahead and put all the decals on just like we did this one right here. We're going to clear coat it, actually put a couple coats of, de of decal softener and then go ahead and seal the entire thing with dull coat two more times so they're really locked in there and they won't come off later on. And then we can go back and put the tools on and things like that. Okay, I've gone ahead and clear coated the entire model as well as started working on the rust effect on the uh, tailpipe here. Now we're just going to go ahead and install all the decals and this is an early war one so you're going to get lots of the big white crosses all over it so we'll go ahead and put all the decals on just like we did this one right here. We're going to clear coat it, actually put a couple coats of, de of decal softener and then go ahead and seal the entire thing with dull coat two more times so they're really locked in there and they won't come off later on and then we can go back and put the tools on and things like that.
Okay, we went ahead and finished up doing the weathering, did some of the weathering and dust effect throughout the entire model. Didn't want to overdo it too much. And of course, we coated the entire thing with the XF57 buff, kind of soften everything on there. Did all of the mud effect inside. And more than likely, we're probably going to go back and do a little diorama with this back in the snow scene, similar to the tiger that I had about a year ago with the whitewash on it. So I might go right over it later on with that. But for right now, I kind of wanted to do a basic build to show you the kit, uh, how it goes together. It was a great kit to put together. It was very easy to assemble. Nothing really fought me at all on it. Uh, the tracks were not very difficult with the individual pieces on it. So all in all, it's a very good kit that I would recommend if you're looking to do something early war. So I want to thank you guys all for watching as usual, and please stay tuned because we have more videos coming.